University has started a new study that takes a look at how the COVID-19 vaccine could affect changes in menstruation. Joining us live to explain is Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at OHSU, Dr. Allison Edelman. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, first, I first want to ask what uh, prompted this area of study? What kind of changes are being reported by women in their menstruation who've been vaccinated? Yeah, that's a really great question. This is actually, this research has been prompted by the public. Um, we don't actually have much information about the reported changes because these are individuals who have reported menstrual changes to the US vaccination system, and they aren't systematically studying these changes. But the changes that are reported are a range in timing, shorter or longer in menstruation, differences in menstrual flow, and differences in symptoms associated with menstruation like cramping. Why is the study so important? Why do we need to know this information? Well, information's power. And in the case of the COVID-19 vaccination, it might mean life or death. People are demanding more information about whether or not this vaccine impacts menstrual health. And this lack of information could lead to vaccine hesitancy. And given that the vaccine is one of the main defenses against serious illness and death caused by COVID, it's really critical with that we provide the information needed by the public to address their fears or to provide more informed counseling on the subject. Yeah, I think when you look at the the uh, issue, when you look at menstruation in the in the larger issue of reproductive health, there's a lot of concern and, and a lot of potential misinformation out there right now uh, with women and and wondering what you know ongoing impact this vaccine could have. But of course, I think it's important too to keep in mind there are a lot of things that can have an impact on a woman's menstruation. So how do you go about sorting out, you know, what what effect the vaccine is having versus other diet and lifestyle changes? I mean, so many factors that can weigh in here. Right. You know, really severe swings and things change menstruation where you can have an impact on medical conditions, but minor things might change things for individuals that are, don't reach the medical level of clinical concern, but might be really of concern to patients. So it might give them a pregnancy scare. It might make them really happy that they might be pregnant when they might not be, or they might be really just surprised by menstruation happening because the timing's off. And so um, for us, what we're doing is we're partnering with several menstrual tracking companies, and we have a great collaboration with two of them who have been tracking menstruation for years. And so we're utilizing that data over the time period of the pandemic to really see how the COVID-19 vaccination affects menstruation. How long do you expect this study to take? Well, we'll be having kind of ongoing phases of the study throughout the year, and it might even go on longer than that. Um, but we're really hopeful to have some initial results by early 2022 or later this winter. I think it's all very, very important as, you know, people are weighing their decisions, you know, whether to get vaccinated, you know, wondering if there's anything else they need to know. Uh, important research, and, and so we're happy to help you get the word out. Dr. Allison Edelman from OHSU, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks and so much. We'd love to follow up with you once the study's complete. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as COVID cases among America's children are surging to all-time highs, more than 252,000 kids tested positive for COVID last week. It's the highest total ever seen in a seven-day stretch, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. The Academy says children accounted for more than 26% of all COVID cases in the U.S. last week. Coin6 News is your back-to-school headquarters. Coin News AM Extra and more than 20,000 Hillsborough students are headed back to the classroom today. Emma Jerome is live from South Meadows Middle School talking with some of the students on their first day. Good morning, Emma.